our dice. Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 93 in our series, Create a Ruby Gem, Nerd Dice. And in this episode, we're going to be dealing with refactoring RuboCop, which is a uh, code linting style enforcement, best practices, consistency um, plugin for Ruby that we've been using throughout this series to kind of enforce best practices and standards as it relates to our Ruby code in this Ruby gem. In our other series that we're working on, nerddice.com, which is a Ruby on Rails project web application, we recently did a video where we converted the rubocop.yaml file, which is the configuration file for uh, rubocop. It tells you kind of which rules to use and allows you to configure enable, disable things, and all that. Uh, we changed that to, instead of explicitly having to add new rules, which are called COPs, um, don't, don't be alarmed, I'm still an anarchist. RuboCop is a voluntary um, code standard enforcement agency, unlike the government that um, is the exact opposite of voluntary. Anyway, I digress. The uh, By default, new cops aren't enabled. So you have to go in you, when you uh, when a new version of RuboCop is released, those things will show up as warnings in yellow text in the terminal. Let me pull up a terminal here. So we're on um, in here. If I do RuboCop, and run it, you can see that there's uh, there aren't any warnings here. But if I were to upgrade this, um, and I'll let me get check out a new branch here. Call it feature. Rubicop config. So if I were to do, and I'm going to reset this before I actually do it, we'll do this later before we update the gem. But if I go and do a uh, bundle update here, you can see that the versions of Rubicop that we have have been uh, upgraded here temporarily. And if I go now and do RuboCop, those, uh, okay. So we'll see here the, um, some of these things, um, obsolete cops will error out. We'll uh, temporarily remove these just to show the, the warning part of this that I want to demonstrate. So, Genspec data assignment gone too soon. Oh, it's been renamed. Okay, so well, at least for now. Just show what it's going to look like, assuming we get a pass and some warnings. So here we go. So the, we'll make this bigger. So these are all the new RuboCop cops that we've got that are uh, new since the last time we updated our bundle. And it uh, notes the following cops were added but are not configured. Please set enabled to either true and false in your RuboCop YAML file. Uh, and it notes that you can opt in to new cops by default by adding this to your config, all cops, new cops enable. So that's what we're going to wind up doing in this episode is that all cops enable. But before we do that, we're going to revert our changes back here. reinstall our bundle 
rerun Rubicop to make sure I didn't break anything. All right, so nothing, we're back to no offenses detected. I will now go in and we'll start making the changes. So essentially, all of these ones that say, with the comment new in whatever version, uh, we can get rid of, and we'll start getting warnings about those, um, just like I, what I demonstrated earlier. And then once we've got the warnings there um, and everything kind of out that we don't need in here, I'll go in and I will um, make that configuration change to enable new cops and rerun things to ensure that we're back at parity. Uh, the benefit of this is now instead of having to slog through a currently 442 line long rubocop.yaml where most of them are just new and whatever version enabled true, uh, we'll be able to just have the rubocop configuration uh, list non-default um, things that we've got in there. So um, that will make it so that it's shorter, easier to read, easier to maintain, and we'll just um, kind of by default pick up these new things in the event that we uh, see a new violation, we have some options available to us. So we can either, if it's auto-correctable, we could auto-correct it. Um, all these standards are voluntary again, so we can um, just choose to not adopt the standard if we disagree with it for whatever reason. Um, we can put enabled false in that um, rubocop.yaml, and then that will be meaningful configuration about these things that are um, non-default behaviors that we've got. So I'm going to now uh, just comb through the different things that we've got here and um, remove all the ones that um, essentially have this new and whatever version um, to make those stop running temporarily and provide warnings to us and then um, we'll go and do that. You don't, you get the idea for how this would work. So I just go in here for things like this, however many in a row. Oh, we've got one that doesn't have a um, new in whatever um, comment associated with it. You get rid of those and you continue moving on. So I will pause and I will do that. In the event that anything notable comes up, I'll unpause it and talk through it. But I think this is going to be mostly just going through and finding all these new and whatever lines in my configuration file and eliminating them. So again, you don't need to watch me. You've seen me uh, do it once here. You get the idea. And then we'll, we'll come back and talk about anything notable that comes up or just review the file. All right, so I have gone and gotten rid of all of the new and whatever cops except for this one here, which I had disabled. So if you enable things by default and then you've got something you want to disable, this is an example of doing it. So um, this used to have the new in whatever version that was comment there. I got rid of that, but I noted here, uh, disable inclusive language cop, none of RuboCop's business. So. Um, that's just something we're doing here on this project. You are free to um, submit to your uh, your own cops and standards as you see fit, uh, not intentionally advocating the use of uh, intentionally offensive language here. But um, again, it's, in my opinion, none of RuboCop's business uh, on this. So there is one other place where there are a bunch of excludes here that have nothing to do with a Ruby gem structure. So this is um, from, I had originally adopted uh, the Rails Rubocop version when I started this project. And these excludes here are related to uh, things specific to the Rails development ecosystem. So I got um, getting rid of those things. Otherwise, it's fairly va vanilla, and now we've got essentially just the um, the things that are, uh, I guess I can also get rid of node modules. Um, and then test here. I think we are doing performance testing on our spec 
directory here. So I think we can get rid of that because we don't have a test directory. Um, and then we've still got RuboCop Performance, RuboCop Rake, RuboCop RSpec. RSpec, there's no T. So I think we're good to now try to save this and rerun it and see what happens in terms of um, what warnings we get. Uh, right now we still have 2.7 set as the target Ruby version. Once we upgrade our version of versions of RuboCop, I will upgrade that to 3.2. I just can't have it be 3.2 right now as I'm uh, as I'm doing this because I haven't updated the bundle yet. So we'll touch this file again uh, before we do our releases, but after uh, in a separate video and story from what we're doing right now. So now I'm going to re-rerun RuboCop. And you can see there are a bunch of warnings now present, uh, but I should be able to suppress and silence those warnings. Cops are good at suppressing and silencing stuff by adding here I think since we're already in the new co the all cops block, um, we'll just put new cops enable. I'll pause and write a comment here about um, this philosophy change, and um, back in a moment. All right, so I've got a comment here at the top, kind of noting this. Uh, philosophy of new cops being enabled by default and then I also added a comment I'll add a space before that uh, noting the change about enablement of new cops by default so now I should be able to take a look at my git status it should only be for as of right now the rubocop.yaml file that's being modified and that is the case. Now I'll rerun RuboCop. And my expectation is that there would be no new violations and no warnings. And those expectations have been uh, met. So I think now we can Add our change. We'll we'll take a look here first at what's going on here. So the new comments, the new configuration. I got rid of the performance test item because we don't have a test directory. Uh, got rid of the Rails specific uh, exclusions about the frozen string literal comment. We have the um, all these new in whatever. Cops now removed from our configuration file. The RSpec messages style we um, enforce style we keep in place, and then um, it kind of removed and then added back in that that change as it relates to naming exclusive language. So there's, there'll be minuses related to that farther up in the um, in the, the diff here. We don't need to, to show it off. Uh, anyway, so our configuration file is now down to 235 lines instead of whatever it was 400 and something so let me find out exactly how much we've saved here so rubocop.yaml previously we had 441 lines and now we've got 235 lines so it's a um, not quite reduction by half but certainly as time goes on and new cops are enabled in the rubocop ecosystem 
this will keep our configuration file much more manageable and cause it to grow far more slowly than it would if we just take all those warnings and copy and paste them into our configuration file. So now we will add our change and write a commit message. I'll pause and write the message. All right, I've got my commit message. It looks eerily similar to the one that I did on the nerddice.com project. Only thing really changing is the issue number referring to the appropriate repository. Um, so we've got that. I should now be able to close that file. There we go. So I've got this file. We're on our branch. Git push origin and then the name of our branch. This will kick off a build. While our build is running, we'll open a pull request to master, which will cause even more building to happen. We will pause and allow this to finish. Assuming that it all succeeds, it shouldn't be um, much more. I mean, we're already seeing things finish, so uh, I think we're in pretty good shape here. I will pause and let this finish. All right, all of our checks have successfully passed. I'll assign myself to this. And then I will merge this from the command line as is my custom. So we'll git checkout master, git merge my branch name, git push, and delete my branch. see while we were uh, this uh, remotely closes the uh, the pull request delete the remote version of the branch and now go into our issue and we will close it as being resolved by number 49 Looking good there. Commit is verified. Close with comment. Move our backlog item to done. And we'll see you in the next video. Code along on an end to end journey through the creation, design, and development of a Ruby on Rails application for managing tabletop role-playing games. We start from Rails New and will guide you along the journey of the entire life cycle of the application. You'll get to see real life, real world problems and challenges as we try to deliver value for our users. Visit statelesscode.com to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.